uh, online presentations can be a little confusing, right? You have a lot of variables, just like me in this studio right here, guys. I have tons and tons and tons of variables that I have to weigh and manage and prepare in order for things not to go haywire when you know we're actually live here, right? You have to make sure your audio is correct. You have to make sure your computer's correct. The software is correct. You got to have your presentation ready. You got to know what you're going to talk about. You have to, you know, somewhat rehearse. You don't really, I don't really rehearse these, but um, you know, you're going to get better and better with practice. But you know, it's an area where people have problems legitimately have problems. And some of the problems, they don't even know that they have. They don't know that those problems are as serious as they thought they were, right? Because you're you're doing presentations. You could be talking to people all day long and sharing your screen and doing these online presentations and, you know, having crappy results. And you're wondering, why, why do I have such crap results? And it can be things like your background noise, your application you're using, people aren't, you know, seeing things, what you think they're seeing. So there's lots of variables that have to be weighed and managed. And we're going to start, we're going to talk about that. And tonight's topics, I'm going to go through, obviously, an intro, which I pretty much gave you guys here. I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but I think I will talk a little bit about it. We're going to be talking about the software, the hardware, the set and the setting. Very, very important. Um, when you're talking about doing online demos, I could tell you guys, you know, it was funny because way, way, way back in the day, you know, when online sort of presentations began, I had broadband, like right when it came out, I got broadband. Before that, I had an ISDN line, I think, or dual ISDN or whatever that was. And when I got broadband and we started doing online demos, you know, there was a host of applications at that time that were popular way back when. And a lot of people have those same applications in their head. And unfortunately, a lot of them still exist. We're going to talk about that. But as it relates to the set and the setting, my first setup was not ideal. Right. And it, but it was probably prototypical and normal to what people do. They just, you know, you know, slap their computer down, go over to, you know, your local uh, wherever, buy a headset that's 15, 20, 30 bucks, throw it on your head, plug it in the little microphone port on the computer and think it's going to work. Right. And people still do that, the, the modern equivalent. And then I didn't, I didn't pay any attention to my background. I didn't pay attention to sound and how things ricocheted and what people were seeing. So we're going to talk a lot about that. That's really, really important. Best practices. What do you do when you're on a demo, right? As there are best practices and there are worst practices to conducting demonstrations. And then the demos themselves give you guys some tips. And of course, we'll take questions at the end. Anyway, going forward here, introduction to online demos. Why, right? Question that people ask, why? Well, right now, the answer to why is pretty straightforward, right? We're all working, most of us anyway, we're working from home, right? If you're working from home, you're going to have to do online demonstrations. If you're used to meeting people in person and selling that way, and eh, you know, that's out for most of us. So selling online has a lot of benefits to it. It's an incredibly, incredibly effective way to sell and entire businesses. It's become the standard for everybody in the best of times where everybody is selling online, right? There's tons and tons of companies that do this absolutely on a consistent basis. We know because we do it, right? We haven't met you guys in person, most of you. So, you know, selling online, it works. Now, how does it work? Uh, if you're, you know, it's VoIP and TCP IP, right? You have a VOIP, um, you know, that's what you guys, you know, that's the term for it. It's voice over IP, internet protocol, and then TCP IP, widely referred to as, you know, the internet protocol. A lot of people drop the TCP. But basically, you know, it's computer to computer connections, internet connection, to internet connection, and you have packets of data going back and forth and people are communicating just like we are right now, except you're not talking to me. That's how that works. It's a very straightforward conceptually to understand it because it sort of mirrors the old fashioned telephone, except instead of a telephone using a computer, right? Very understandable. It's effective. Selling online works. But most importantly, though, is effectiveness aside, it's not always about selling online, right? You have clients. Some of you guys have 30, 40, 50, 100, 200, whatever number of clients you got. You know, I'm sure there's people here that are, you know, pushing more than that. I don't know. But the point is, it's critical that you have the ability, even if you don't use it. And later on, I'm going to talk about some stuff that I think all of you should have, even if you don't use a Skype account. Everybody pretty much in business today should have a Skype account, for example. Everybody should be able to conduct a demo in two seconds when asked. Why? Because everybody should be able to conduct a meeting in two seconds if asked. Meetings with your salespeople, meetings with your associates, meetings with clients, on and on and on. It's absolutely a vital, essential, critical, call it whatever you want. If you can't do this in 2020 and you expect to be in business, 
you got a problem. You need to go back to school and learn how to do this because it's critical that you do this and you do it right, especially if you're running an agency because it speaks to your reputation and your professionalism. Not being able to conduct this makes you look real bad. And I'll get into how that can harm you later on. Is it so, so often done wrong? Now, it's easy when you're informed. Conducting a demo, easiest thing in the world if you do it right. A lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about, I want you guys to keep this in mind. When I talk about other aspects of this, like the software, the hardware, um, you know, when I get into that, understand every single person's situation is different. You could use a computer that was made 10 years ago, right, with like a microphone that cost 20 bucks, right, bought, bought correctly, and you could have excellent results. You could, you could have excellent results on a laptop. You can have excellent results on some tablets. You can have excellent results on a lot of different hardware. Software, a little bit different story. And I'll get into hardware in a minute. When it comes to software, you've got a whole bunch of viable, what I call viable options, right? Meaning that they're usable, right? There's stuff that's out there. There's many pieces of software in this space. When you go and you look online and you, you check out what's out there, you know, you've got all kinds of stuff that I'm not going to recommend. You've got Plesk and, and, and different things that are out there, pieces of software that just don't really measure up. Then you have some stuff that you may have heard about or used in the past and you think, well, that's what I should buy. But maybe you shouldn't because it's no good anymore. It's overpriced or it's ridiculous. Like GoToMeeting. I'm a huge uh, proponent of everybody avoiding GoToMeeting. Zoom is... But far and away, my number one recommendation to absolutely all of you, right? Zoom is not only free, right? You have a free version. You get 40 minutes of talk time to anybody. It's the best of the best of the best when it comes to screen sharing. Guys, I'll tell you, all platforms, just about, I, I don't know anything that doesn't support Zoom. I mean, esoteric stuff supports Zoom, like old, old, old versions of Android work fine with Zoom. Um, Linux works fine with Zoom. Macs, of course, work fine with it. Windows systems work fine with it. Tablets, you know, everything runs it. So you're able to communicate and connect with the largest swath of people. Another one that's, you know, re relatively reasonably priced, and I used it for a while, for a long time, was Join.me. Join.me is another excellent application for doing screen sharing. You have to take, you have to take your pick. If you've picked already, if you've chosen already, then that's that's what you got. Now, we have a... Um, integrated option that's you know free for X amount of meetings. We have we have uh, some excellent stuff that uh, you know in, that you guys have access to already. But you know when it comes to doing this, when it comes to being in business, everybody can just use Zoom. It's free. Go ahead and get yourself. Go over to Zoom.us and I'll even type it in the chat here so you guys have the link. This is a really great yeah right here. Yeah, Carlos, that's okay. You know I'm gonna punch it in here. I think everybody should go and make themselves an account and, you know, use it. I'm not like a paid sponsor or anything. Um, it's an application that, you know, it's very, very viable. Whatever you use, though, there's some more important things about the software. There are more important things than that, which is the scheduling. This is an area where a lot of people, um, tons and tons, guys, make huge, huge blunders. Uh you know, a lot of people say, why bother? Why bother with a piece of scheduling software? Well, because you're running an agency. If you're doing demos routinely, you have to have something to keep you organized. Now, the CRM system that you got has its own little scheduler built in there, and you can use that. You can use your email, you know, client, whatever you've got there. You can punch stuff in there. You can keep paper notes on your desk. There are a lot of ways that you can schedule and stay on time. But there are also some great applications out there. There's an application called Calendly. Tom absolutely loves it. He uses that for scheduling all kinds of stuff. So you have to get yourself some kind of a system in place to schedule and make sure that you are A, on time, B, not forgetting you have a meeting, and C, that keeps stuff organized. Because some meetings might run an hour plus. Some meetings might be 20 minutes. Some meetings might be really long. You don't, you know, it depends on what you're doing. It's essential that you show up to your demos on time and you make it easy for people to attend. That's the most important thing of all. When it comes to scheduling, that's what scheduling is really all about. It's about making sure that you're there at, you know, 9.45 instead of 10 o'clock so that you're early when your, you know, your partners or counterparty jumps on and you want to talk with that person. This is so overlooked by people, so overlooked. 
I don't know how many great, amazing sales guys have blown sales, lost demos, uh, just done, just had real problems because they just were not organized. Organization, scheduling, they go hand in hand when it comes to this topic. If you're doing lots of demos online, you better have a system to keep track. And also to keep track posthumously after the fact, when you're looking in the rear view mirror uh, at all the demos that you had, or maybe one of your salespeople had, you want to be able to see what went on, right? When you look back in time, keep a record of events. Scheduling will let you do that. So really important, just a minor point, but I want to throw it in there after software because we're going to talk about hardware at this point. And the hardware options, there's a lot to discuss on this, right? We could sit and have a, fair, a whole webinar really on the hardware, but I'm going to make this real simple for you guys. You got basically four devices most of us own nowadays, right? We have desktop PCs or laptops, and then we have, you know, most of us will have both. I mean, people have different computers, but let's say we have... Let's say we just have a laptop, right? For argument's sake. And we have a smartphone and we have a tablet of some kind. Well, a mistake a lot of people make is they try to conduct online demos, right? And presentations and stuff from their smartphones or from their tablets. Now, you can do it with, you know, some of the tablets, they are almost like laptops nowadays, right? You get the laptop, the tablets that plug in with the keyboard and, you know, it's got a cam, but it's sort of off to the side if you do that, you know, and it kind of works. People do that kind of stuff. I don't really like it. Not when you're in business. If you're, you know, an individual attending a meeting and you're like at home and you're, you know, just hanging out and you, you know, some salesperson calls you, sure, hop on a meeting on your phone. That's no problem. You're an attendee. But if you're the person presenting, you really have to give the person a, a an experience that, uh, you know, they ex anticipate having, which is they want to see things large because they they could be watching on their TVs. They could be watching on their laptops or computers. I have a 4K display in front of me that's 30 something inches in size. And that's just my standard monitor, right? If I'm looking at somebody presenting from, you know, a fairly small tablet or a phone, it's going to look screwed up on my screen if that's what I'm seeing. So even though the applications have that capability, I don't advise people taking the, taking that road for an industrial process, right? You're running an agency. You're supposed to be industrial process. You're supposed to be somebody that just does this every, all day, every day. You need a setup, right? You need an actual, you know, uh, system of facilitating this happening repeatedly for people on variable devices that gives everybody a good experience, all right? That's to sum it up. So with that in mind, hardware options, I advise everybody a desktop or a laptop and take your tablet and your, your smartphone, use them for what they were made for. When it comes to presenting an online demo, you're talking about variables such as some of you may want to have a camera. Some attendees, some people that hop on, they want to see the person. Visit, you know, they, they'll turn their cam on. You're, you're on a demo with somebody and you're talking to them. They're like, hey, come on, turn your cam on. Let's look at each other when we're talking about this. We're talking about a big deal here or whatever. You want to be able to quickly do that to do it in a way that's going to, you know, look proper. Or you may want to do that all the time because it, it builds trust faster. Some people, it works for them really well. Um, there's even studies and stuff on that, but I don't know if I believe them 100%. So which device? Go ahead, use yourself a laptop, desktop. System cleanup. Oh, boy. Um, guys, I, I can't tell you. I've been on demos from major Fortune 100 companies, major companies, big, big, big names. And you hop on and the sales guy has a desktop that's just covered in folders and junk and the browser's all screwed up and it's got tabs open for his personal Facebook and his bookmarks are showing and there's some unsavory sites in there and we're reading them and there's a mixed group of people in an office looking at a screen having to see that. That's horrific. Horrific. It should absolutely never, ever happen from you and you should be ashamed if it does. You should clean your computer up and make it visually, visually, your computer should look like it did from the factory. Maybe a wallpaper. I don't even do that so much. So, you know, make sure you clean your system up before you do demos. If not, you are going to look horrible. You're not going to get the sale because you might even offend somebody. You could even trash your reputation. So it's just not worth it. Make sure you have everything cleaned up, right? And, and if you want a foolproof way to do that, like if you want to keep your browser bookmarks and stuff, go and get another browser. Right? Get Chrome. If you if Firefox is your preferred browser, get Chrome. If Chrome's your preferred browser, get Firefox. If you don't like those two, go get Brave. 
Brave's a browser that has higher privacy than Firefox, started by the originator of Firefox, and it's an excellent option. There are tons and tons and tons of excellent browser options out there. So you can get a dedicated browser and say, okay, this is the one I'm going to use when I do demos. And guess what? The best part, just about all of them are compatible, right? Because Zoom uses its own little installed application on desktops to, to boot, run, and share your screen. Really great. And as you guys remember, we used Zoom for a long time here for these webinars we conduct, right? We used them for a long time. Always reboot. And oh, another thing I would add to this list, and I'll talk about this later, is reboot your system, but test your system, right? Make sure everything is good. Quality really, really matters um, when it comes to computers. And guys, I won't get into the specifics of it. I just got burnt on a computer purchase pretty bad. And getting burnt on that, reminded me quality matters. And, uh, you know, you got to make sure that you buy from reputable sellers when you buy computers. You got to make sure that if the thing is screwed up, don't use it. Get yourself something better. Computers these days are literally like uh, throwaway items. I mean, you know, those of you who are near any kind of metro area whatsoever or, you know, anywhere, I mean, we have eBay, obviously, you can buy on there, but you can get a, a decent system for just nothing these days, just nothing. So, you know, have yourself a system. Make sure that you buy something decent. Make sure that what you do in terms of hardware, um, you know, fits the bill for what you're doing in terms of life and in business. Because if it doesn't, you're going to be in a situation where, you know, you're hopping on to demos and you're not making sales and you're not knowing why. And one of the major mysteries to a lot of salespeople, something that I obviously have dealt with quite a bit, are microphone options and microphone issues, Right. Uh, you know, when it comes to a, an audio setup, this is like a big part of the battle. I know you guys. I mean, I look at this list of people that are on this webinar right here, and I know you guys. I've spoken to so many of you on the phone, uh, just so many of you that are on here. I've spoken with, we've had chats, we've exchanged emails. I know you got charisma. I know you can sell. I know there's people here that have so much potential. Your microphone broadcasts you to somebody's ears, right? They're they're sitting on the other end of a computer. You got two people, right? You're located in, I don't know, wh whatever state you're in, they're 20 states away. They're, they're a, let's say they're across the Atlantic Ocean. They're in England. And this person sits down to go on a demonstration with you. And, you know, if your voice sounds like, you know, some crazy stuff like this, watch. If your voice starts sounding all screwed up like this and it's all like, I'm in a cave. And, hey, how's it going there, guys? What's going on? You sound screwed up, people will notice, and then they won't buy, right? They're not going to buy. And the way mic problems begin for people, where this whole, this whole sort of discussion um, begins is because most of the integrated options are terrible, right? You have to know how to set up a, a mic setup. Number one, you have to use earbuds. Okay, you can't have your speakers blasting in the room and then a microphone that's open and listening to those speakers or it creates a sound loop where whenever that other person on the other end talks, they're going to hear themselves in their own ears coming out of their in because if they're wearing earbuds, they're just going to hear themselves speakers as well. It'll just echo through their speakers and create this loop. You want to always avoid that, right? Many some of you, yeah, guys are typing that you've seen that. You've dealt with it. That's a constant problem with audio. If you have speakers, you need headphones. Number one thing, you got to have some kind of headphones. Microphone, right? If your microphone, you know, like fell out of a Mattel toy box or, you know, is, is some thing that you, you know, some really, really bare bones deal, um, you may have problems with that. It might not work. It's certainly not going to sound optimal, right? Now, Microphones come in two, two basic, you know, varieties, right? You have your integrated mics in your computers right nowadays. Like if you have an all-in-one computer, if you have a lot of webcams, Logitechs, um, like the C920, C930s, those newer Logitechs, they have uh, mics built into them. You've got mics built into your tablets, your laptops, etc. So a lot of people say, well, why would I buy a mic? It's got one built in. Well, like, because the problems I just mentioned right? Your noise loops, your issues with the mic just being low quality junk. Um, there's a lot to talk about on that. If you're in sales and you're the kind of guys and gals that I know are on this call right now, you're kind of people that have tremendous charisma, tremendous ability to sell. And your main obstacle here, your main weapon, not even obstacle, really your weapon, your sword in this battle is your voice talking to these people, talking to whoever. So investing in a good microphone is worth it. 
When it comes to dynamic or condenser, there's these two types of mics, right? One is powered, that's a condenser. The other one is not, it has its, it runs on magnetism, which is dynamic. Like I'm using a dynamic mic to talk to you right now. Condenser microphone, you could hear a pin drop. One of the big problems is most of these microphones that you're looking at out there, they're not only condenser mics, they're condenser mics that are you know, micro, micro or what's called tiny capsule uh, microphones that are built in a way such that they're, they're just have a very, very poor range or what we would call, you know, a sound curve, right? There's a very, very poor, um, you know, ability to pick up sound. My recommendation to all of you guys, to everybody here, and I've got them myself for if I'm on the road or whatever, are Yetis or Rode Podcasters. There are USB mics now that are made and they're for sale at standard places like Staples, Office Max. You can go in there and look at them. The Yeti um, Blue series of mics, which I personally, I've, I've had two of, they're just, they're a big old USB microphone that looks exactly like what you think a microphone should look like, right? It's a big old, you know, and they come in different colors. The ones I have are silver. And what they do is they give you the ability to have essentially an external microphone and your earbuds plugged into this one little device sitting on your desk. That's where I talk. And what's great about them is they have different um, pickup patterns. You can change them. So you can do like what's called, you know, a, a um, you can do a pattern that's a cardioid or you can do different types of patterns in order to pick up your voice in different ways. That would be what I'd recommend everybody to check out who's looking for, you know, a good solid audio setup. Now, there are other options out there, right? There are other good options. Like somebody just typed, Jason said he ordered headphones. Well, there are, there are some good ones. I don't know what you ordered, but there are some excellent, you know, headphone options that are out there. The problem I have found, and I own a bunch of them. I own a bunch of the Logitech ones because I tested them out, tried them out, see if they made the grade, where I put them on my head and they're noise canceling, so they'll cut out background noise. The problem is they're a lot like uh, Chopper Pilot headphones or, you know, the ones used in aviation, right? Where the dynamic range is sacrificed in order to give you just raw communications power, right? So you, you come through rough, usually relatively rough, uh, compared to a, a dedicated, you know, vocal microphone of any kind, but it'll cancel out background noise. People use them widely in gaming and stuff like that, where who cares what you sound like? It's live chat communications between players, so they could care less. I don't recommend those. You know, I've spent, I think, 150 on a pair. I've spent some some real money on them. I've actually spent more on a pair of those than a Yeti would cost or some of the lower cost Rode microphones. The Rhodes are excellent. The Yetis are excellent. They really do a great job. When it comes to the audio hardware, like if you wanted to get really into it, you know, you can get really into it. You can buy a real mic, like the mic I'm talking into, but this mic costs more than, you know, computers and <laughs> the computer it's, that it runs on. So, you know, uh, you have to, you have to make the rec, you have to make the call. I would advise everybody invest in that. Now, moving on here, I know I spent a little time on that, is the set and setting. Next to your microphone, your software is set and setting. But I'll tell you guys, as I go through this and I'm thinking to myself right now, anything can be undermined if you're doing a bad job with the tools that you have. You know, the set and setting, this is a big, com this thing should just say common sense across the front of it because this is what you really need to get your set and setting right. Number one, you need to be in an environment that chops down your background noise as much as possible right? You know, go to a quiet space in your house, set yourself up in the spare bedroom, set yourself up in the garage if you have to, wherever, but a place that you don't have background noise or interruptions that are going to bother you because there's nothing that looks worse than when, you know, you have to consider, I'm going to be sitting at a computer. I'm going to have this computer set up. I'm going to be talking to somebody who may want to look at me and they may want a webcam. You know, it might be a webcam on me. Um, you know, I have to I have to pay attention to this because they're going to hear things. And if there's chickens clucking, dogs barking, babies crying, screaming, you know, honking horns, any of that stuff is going to cause a disruption. It's going to cost me ultimately the attention of my audience. Ultimately, could cost me a sale because it forms a bad impression, bad internet connection. A lot of people think they have bad internet connections. This is kind of tied to people streaming because what's going on now, especially right now, 
our people are online, right? And they're all streaming Netflix and YouTube. So a lot of people who are on cable internet, which is, you know, mostly set up as a, sh you know, shared internet connection situation where, you know, you have the trunk that runs down to like your neighborhood and everybody's just feeding off the bandwidth that's allocated to that area. All of a sudden, your internet connection gets really spotty and you can have problems. You can have what's called packet loss. Packet loss is when the data going from your computer, your home, out, in, out to your, you know, person who's listening to you, your counterparty, that person isn't getting the packets or more correctly, Zoom isn't getting them or whatever app you're using. And so they can't, they can't stream it to them. So they wind up with a situation where you have choppy video, choppy audio, problems like that. That's something you need to mitigate, and take care of. If people are streaming like in your own house, because this is mostly the problem is you'll be on a, you know, you'll have your cable modem, you're on the internet and you've got like, you know, your wife, your girlfriend, your kids, your neighbor, whoever, on your internet connection, streaming Netflix and watching it in 4K, well, they're eating up the bandwidth that you need to do your demonstration, right? So you have to get them offline, kick them off of there, okay? Poor light. Another problem um, I've seen quite a few times is people are either have way too much light on themselves, like they'll sit next to a big open window with the sun outside and they'll position the, that behind themselves or stuff like that. If you position yourself staring into a room with a window behind you and there's the sun outside, you you immediately turn um, unrecognizable, right? Because the camera, the way it sees, it's not a retina of an eye. This thing sees flat, whereas we have gradations in our vision. This thing turns you dark in the background, bright white, and then you can't see anything. So make sure that, you know, your light is correct and it's on you and not behind you or off to the side doing stuff that it shouldn't be doing. Cluttered, messed up environments. This should be a no brainer. If, you know, you're a hoarder and you've got stuff stacked to the ceiling and you're doing a demonstration and people are like staring at last year's chicken wrapper from KFC or, you know, whatever, you don't need that going on, right? Get all that junk out of there. You need a clean, decent environment. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be, you know, plain, normal, so it's not a distraction. The key to this is you don't want any of your personality, your life, being a distraction, right? Keep it professional, and you're going to be just fine. Don't stress about this either. I've seen a lot of people avoid demos or have camera fear or, you know, whatever. It's completely misplaced fears. This is the easiest thing in the world to do. It's literally get a computer, go install Zoom, plug a US plug a mic in its USB port, plug headphones in the side into that, into the mic jack on the head on the microphone, because the microphone has one. If you get a Yeti, boom, you're good. Right. Now we're gonna go into some best practices here. Okay. You guys are asking some questions. You know, uh, some of the best practices. Number one, number one thing, and I've I'll tell you guys, and this is maybe not true for everybody, it's sure as hell true for old Jake here. If I show up to a demo and I wait five, five minutes, let's say, and the person doesn't show up, I just close it. I'm not going to bother with them. I just say, you know, what an a-hole. I'm not dealing with that person. Boom. They couldn't bother to show up and I'm here. I'm the one waiting. I'm the, the client. What the hell's that? So I advise to do what I do. Show up early every single time, at least five minutes early, right? You don't have to be five minutes. You know, you don't have to be a half hour early and like sit on your computer, but be early. Show up. There's nothing worse than doing that, especially if you've booked a demo with somebody. That's why a scheduler is so damn important to make sure that you're on time every single time you have a demo or a meeting. Scheduler will do that for you. It'll give you that reminder you need. Your smartphones have calendars in them. Your smartphones have the ability to schedule events and remind you, use that. Clean your system up, right? Said it before, I'll say it again. Clean it up. Don't be a, Don't look messy. Have a plan. When you get into these demonstrations, make sure that you have a plan. If you don't have a plan, and I'm going to talk about that a lot, um, boy, that, that can be problematic. 99% of the time when it comes to doing these demos, you've spoken to the person prior and you've got a story out of them. You know what you're going to present. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. Very important. Practicing, rehearsing, double checking of things. You know, you have to make sure everything works. Um, just this evening, just this evening before this webinar that you all are on, an hour before, I was doing my pre-webinar check, right? Where I check the computer, check the mic, check the audio gear, just check everything. Make sure that, you know, I can log into the application that I use to do this broadcast. Go to log into it. Boom. For some reason, they, they changed something. Something changed. I couldn't log in, right? Pass, go to do password reset. Didn't work. They didn't send me an email. I ended up having to wait like 30 minutes for an email from them. 
And luckily it all came through, but that's why you check and that's why you check early because all of you right now could be no webinar, right? You guys wouldn't be happy with me about that. Well, your prospects wouldn't be happy with you about that if you did the same thing. So always make sure that you check, check, double check. I'll say it 50 times, a thousand times to you guys. Be as professional as you expect of yourself. Do not go into these demos, you know, thinking that you can kind of let everything slouch and slack and get loose. Yeah, not good. You have to go into these demos, these demonstrations, utilizing best practices. Now I'm going to talk and I'm going to, this is where this presentation branches a little bit. We're going to talk about the conduct of demonstrations because that's what it's really all about. The minute that you are technically set up to do demos online, it's time to start. You know, like I tell you guys, every, I don't know if, if every webinar I've been on, right guys, I've told you, you need to get out there. You need to start selling. I'm always talking about that. Now in the past, before things, uh, present events manifested, I was telling you guys, go knock doors and, and make local partnerships and all this kind of stuff right now. Maybe it's, maybe it's not, um, in the cards to go bang doors in your area, but you can still do demonstrations. So getting yourself set up to conduct a demo, to conduct meetings is like, it should be like job one. You need to do that day one. You need to be set up to do this and to do it easily, like to easily hop on your computer and be like, Hey, what's, you know, you should ask the person, the person's talking to you. Hey, you know, let's do a demonstration. It should be as simple as, yeah, what's your email address? You know, get their email, fire them off the invite and start in two minutes. It's something you should be ready to do all the time. So we'll talk about this. Online demos, the basics. I always like this phrase, you know, assume little, anticipate much. You'll be okay. I don't know where I heard it first, but it's really, really applicable when it comes to doing these online demos and meetings because when you're when you've got a person on the other end, right? They're a prospect. Let's say it's you know Joe the Joe the plumber, right? What whoever, right? Not Joe the plumber. Let's say Joe the baker. Joe the baker um, wants to have a demonstration with you, and he goes, okay, you know, and you set it up and you send him the invite link, and you're gonna hop on. You're gonna talk to Joe the baker. You go to hop to hop on and talk to Joe the baker, and there's some lady there. Her name's Jill. Well, Jill is half owner of Joe the baker's business. And then Susan is on there and there's Mark and there's then he interview you can, talking to five people here. Right. And, you know, <laughs> and you're on this demo and you're like, why are there five people? I just talked to one guy. I thought he owned it. No, those are his partners and they don't make decisions without the other ones there. And one of them's interested in what you're talking about. And the other one thinks they know a little bit. And you think you're going into a one-on-one -on -one meeting and you end up with five people happens all the time, all the time, guys. And, when you understand that and understand it and you anticipate anything could happen when you set a demo with somebody, then you're ready, right? Because you could you could hop on thinking, I'm gonna present to one person. One time, guys, I'll tell you this. One time I had a demonstration where I thought I was gonna get on with some, you know, middle manager, uh, but a purchasing person at uh the NHL hockey organization. I ended up getting on and there was like 15 people there. It was a huge demonstration for a website. And this is years and years and years ago. But the point is, I got absolutely slammed by that because I think I'm just going to talk to this guy. We're just emailing back and forth and we've been communicating for a while. And, you know, they're talking about they're going to increase spending and this and that. It was like a nothing thing. And boom, here I am. And no, they want to buy massive, massive, way more than I thought. So thank God I was ready for it. You know, I was dressed correctly, cam ready, computer ready, and I could hop on and I could talk to a whole audience. But if I wasn't ready, think of the mess I'd be in, right? That's how you have to think about this. Every time you have to be ready, you have to have that plan of what you're going to talk about. Fixating, you know, a lot of times a mistake I see, and I've seen this so many times that I have to kind of talk about it a little is in sales, right? Say you're, you're hungry, right? You know, any of you, let's say you're hungry, you go in a restaurant. I've always used this example, but it's a good one. You go in a restaurant hungry, you're hungry for a steak. You sit down, waitress, waiter comes over to you. You say, hey, I'd like a steak, right? And that person starts talking back to you about a mashed potato and cauliflower. And you're like, why are you talking about cauliflower? Why aren't you talking to me about the steak, right? Because, you know, that's how you have to look at demonstrations. If you go into your demo with a robotic type of plan, and this is really speaks to planning, um, you're never going to be tuned up correctly. You have to always consider the central tenant that 
what is relevant to this client, what is interesting to them, what matters to them, right? You have to fix uh, fix your focus and stay on topic with that. Because what, what my point is, value is only added with extra things or other things after needs are met. If the client perceives their needs to be one thing and you perceive them to be another and you're wrong, well, you know, you're in a situation where you just blew a sale. Just like if I walked in a restaurant asking for a steak and hearing about a potato. Potato might have been interesting after we talked about how great the porterhouse is, but it's not going to be interesting at all if I'm not getting a steak with it, right? That's my point to you. So if you go in and you know you're, you have somebody really interested in SEO and you want to talk website, you have to shift and pivot that conversation in a very dip diplomatic way if they need a site. But if they don't need a site, don't even talk about it. Focus all your attention on what they're interested in hearing about. Staying on topic. It's incredibly easy when, you know, I, I can't count how many demos I've been in where it's very easy to get off topic. Very easy to get off topic and go in all kinds of different directions with conversations. How, you guys know this. How, exactly. A bunch of you are saying yes and stuff. You guys have had this stuff happen, right? You've had it happen in demonstrations all the time where you're going out to a meeting or you're talking to somebody about one thing and you end up on another. You know, you start talking web development. They mentioned their uncle built a site one time and all of a sudden, five seconds later, you know, things have pivoted and 15 minutes later, they're still off, to, off topic. You have to always steer the conversation back. And for those of you who have paid attention to sales in general, I know some of you have been through courses and, and whatnot. Um, it's key and central to many different sales systems. And you have to be a master of keeping the topic you want to talk about, the topic you are talking about, and not deviating off. And you have to deviate enough to make someone comfortable and build rapport, but you can't stay there. You have to always bring the conversation back, and you have to be the one to do that because the client won't. You can't go too fast or too slow, right? Big problem people have, you know, when they're selling is either going way too fast, they're just blowing through a presentation, or they're going too slow and they're putting the person to sleep. That's an instinct. That's something you build with time. It's not something you're going to immediately be great at, but it's important. Assume that other people are present always. I always do that on demos, and I've done that for years, because you can be on a demonstration and off camera, out of sight, or quiet. You could be talking to a bunch of people, and you think you're talking to one. And people get friendly on these webinars, right? If you've done a lot of them, those of you who've done hundreds, thousands of presentations know, you know, you have people with all different personalities. You have people who are going to clown with you and joke and goof and everything else. But that other person that's there, they might take a different, uh, they, they might not take kindly to that. So you have to always act as though you're on, on stage in front of a large audience. That's how I have always handled it. I don't, you know, go off topic or, you know, of course, use any foul language, anything like that when it comes to online demos. I even go so far as to say, you should probably pretend you're being recorded. Don't say anything crazy. Online meeting tips. Number one, come prepared. Um, preparation is the key to this thing. Having yourself a plan, making sure that your computer's set up, making sure your internet connection's solid, everything works, et cetera. You know, that goes without saying you have to be prepared. You have to stay focused. You know, don't let side discussions turn into, you know, off-topic craziness and then follow up. And this, this is something that, uh, it's kind of like one of those presentations tonight, guys. I could go on with this for, gosh, we could have hundreds of slides on so many different subtopics of this, but follow-ups are crucial. If you don't chase money, you don't get money. You know, that that's how it works. You have to chase the money. You're never going to get a sale. And chasing the money in, in the context of demos is after that demo is complete, call them, hound them, right? Um I don't know how many folks end their demonstrations with, with well, you know, the other person telling them, well, I'll call you if I'm interested. Click. Versus, when do you want to schedule a follow-up? A lot of people end their webinars letting the client dictate the terms of the next meeting when what you should really do at the end of your webinars, end of your meetings, end of, you know, your, your sales demonstrations is you should be setting up the next steps at the end, Right. Either, even if the next step, and you don't have to be overly aggressive because you're not pushing for the close always at the very end of the conversation, not always. You, so what you want to do is you want to set up that next call. Always, always, always do that. Make sure that you make your own fortune. Now, I'm going to give you guys some final thoughts and I'll take questions here for a little bit. Number one, prepare, test, repeat. Um, 
when you look at it, when you, when you do this for a living, like when you do what I do, right, where you work with computers, you know, you work with, you know, basically doing lots of webinars and lots of um, video presentations and stuff, you learn the importance of testing everything. Like I tested tonight. This is like my, I don't know how many hundreds, even thousands of these webinars, probably thousands and thousands that I've done through the years. I still test every single time because there's still bugs often. There's always bugs. I rely on the code that was written by thousands, thousands, and thousands of other people for this conversation to happen between the two of us, right? If you added up the number of individuals that put together every piece of code that runs all this stuff and have engineered everything, it's it's remarkable. It's absolutely breathtaking. So because you rely on lots of other people and there's always software patches, updates, bugs, et cetera, always test, 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 because you can overcome bugs if they're there, but not if you don't know they exist. Microphone bug, number one. Always be early to your meetings. Um, you know, I said it earlier and I'll say it again. You're not early, you're a fool. You're going to lose sales because of it. You're going to piss people off. Eventually, you're going to have somebody write something about you online, maybe. You know, it, it's the kind of thing that's not, it's just not good. If you're hounding people to have meetings and then you're you're blowing them off, you're just wasting your time, right? Invest in yourself. If you have to, drop 50 bucks to buy yourself a podcasting microphone. You know, if you have to drop 50 bucks to get, um, you know, the appropriate equipment, or even if it's a hundred bucks, right? It's not much in the grand concept of your business. It's really, really, really worth it. Um, you get one sale out of it, right? It's like it bought itself, you know, 10 times over. So really worth it. One of those things that, um, you know, you got to have, I think. Sales happen when you make them happen. Right. Important point to always keep in mind that when it comes to the importance of meetings and demonstrations uh, remotely and sales. This is something that, you know, you have to just get up and do. And I understand some people um, look at the, you know, this is kind of a shift for some of you, because I know the folks on here, some of you have been selling in different ways and you're getting into this and I'm getting a lot of questions about it. You're going to make sales online if you've made them offline, Right. It's usually the other way around that has a problem. It's usually the folks that are really, really fine with being on a phone or being behind a computer that have trouble when they hop off and they have to go out in person. And, you know, the people who've been selling in person, you already have the charisma. You need a little, little, little bit of, you know, time testing and training yourself on this stuff. And by a little bit, I mean like an afternoon hanging out, right? Hanging out in your, you know, your house, setting yourself up a little spot to work. Not that much work at all. You're your own boss. You need to choose wisely. I think you guys know which way you should choose with this. Don't be afraid afraid to try try and fail and try again. Really important that you don't you know develop a fear of doing online demos. I know that phobias come in a million forms, and people I've known have had problems with demoing in person and have overcome it. People have had people have had phobias of demoing. People have phobias of cameras. They get over it because it's not really scary. Once you realize that it's just a, you know, one of your hangups, you put it out of your head, just go and try it, do it. You're going to realize this was nothing. Success is the end result, not the beginning. And um, guys, that's, that's the truth. Uh, every single thing I've ever done in my life has taken a lot of effort and it's been taking a lot of time, right? Everything that I value in my life has taken time and effort and energy to accomplish the same is true when you're building your business. Building a business is not something you do in a day. It's a process. It's something that is a process of manifestation, right? You slowly manifest success. You don't just find it. Very, very few people win the lottery. A lot more people get rich building businesses than winning the lotto. And I can tell you that this as a hurdle is not a high one. Anyhow, guys, we're at, we're at time here. It was wonderful speaking with all of you. I wish all of you guys the best of luck out there. I have a post coming up that goes along with this webinar. It's a long form post that we're going to be publishing here on this topic that goes into real extraneous detail. And I explain a lot of things that I did really couldn't go into in an hour as deeply as I wish. So have a good evening, guys. Great talking to all of you. I wish you all the best of luck. As always, get out there and sell them.